My name is uh, Giuseppe Barone. Uh, I'm a footballer and I uh, currently play here in Italy in the second division Serie B for a team that's called uh, Salernitana. And uh, background, basically growing up, I played for a club in uh, New York that was called uh, Brooklyn Italians. From there, uh, I went to college and I played uh, at Long Island University Brooklyn campus. From there, uh, I signed with the New York Cosmos in March of 2019, played a full season there. And then I went to, after that season, in um, January 2020, 2020, sorry, um, I went to uh, Italy here and I signed with Perugia in Serie B at the time. Unfortunately, I signed, I got hurt right away. I tore my ACL. So I missed the season, and uh, in the summer I signed here in uh, Salerno for Salernitana. Awesome. All right, so man, uh, can you tell us when you're growing up, where did you first start playing and what age? When I grew up, uh, first started playing. I first started playing when I was, I want to say, around five, six years old. But I could say that ever since I was a kid, uh, there's always a ball around me and there was always something uh, involving soccer around me. So I would say around five, six years old that I, when I first started playing. And it was always a part of your life even when I was at the young age. Yeah, always, always, always. It was, it was something that I always, always had around me and always something that I always did. So as a, as a left winger uh, yourself, do you have any uh, football icons that you look up to that you say, wow, this player is amazing? Yeah, for sure. Uh, I would say one who always stands out to me, which, which he's, he's phenomenal at what he does, is uh, Di Maria. Um, the way he is with the ball and how crafty he is, is, yeah. is, is inspiring. And it's, he's, he's very consistent at what he does. And he, he doesn't do anything crazy. But he, he's, like I said, he's always consistent. And uh, for me, he's one of the guys who stands out uh, every game when he, when he steps on the field. Of course, his dribbling abilities are... Right. Yeah, everything. So, um, how was the transition from playing in uh, football in the U.S. compared to playing in Italy? Yeah, I mean, back home, um, I could say there's not as, as much pressure as there is here. Um, it could be a good thing, it could be a bad thing. You know, it could work in your favor or it couldn't. Um, but back home, there wasn't, uh, at least from my experience, there wasn't as much pressure as there is here now. Um, obviously, because here, if you win the championship, you're able to go up. But at the same time, if you lose the championship, you can go down a division. So back home, it's it, it was uh, if you win, you win. If you lose, you're you're still in the same you're still in the same league, same category, same division. Um, and I think uh, I could say the biggest thing is probably the pressure that comes with with uh, with the job here. You know, um, whether it's the fans. Uh, coming to training and giving you a boost or the fans coming there and, and yelling at you because you just lost to the last place team. So I think uh, the pressure is definitely one of the biggest things, the difference between, I would say, the football back home and the football here in, in Italy. Totally. And now with, with the whole pandemic going on, how does, it, how does it differ from before when there were fans at the stadium compared to now when there's no one there? Is, it, is there less of a boost? I mean, yeah, for sure. I mean, if you look at the club that I play for, uh, the fan base is great. It's, um, it's a very big fan base. It's a city that cares about the team, cares about the shirt. And, I mean, I definitely think if, if they were in the stadium this year, um, they, would, they would definitely give us a boost. Um, I mean, I never experienced a stadium full with them. But they say they're, they're pretty crazy and, uh, and uh, they, get, they get wild. But, no, I think uh, they, could give, they could give us a boost. and. This season, I mean, who knows? If they were there, they could have. We, maybe we'd be four points ahead. Maybe we'd be five points ahead. You know, maybe five points extra. Um, but yeah, it's definitely it's definitely different without them. Um, so yeah. So when you were transitioning uh, from life back home in America, now moving to Italy, what was what was that like for you? Was it difficult? Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, when I first got here, things are different. It's a different world. Um, Italy's a different country, a different culture than back home. Um, obviously, six hours ahead from home, there's a, a time difference. Um, just 
I mean, everything, whether, whether it's from food to, to walking around in, in, in the city and seeing people, their lifestyle, I think every, everything was, I mean, was it difficult? I don't think it was difficult because you, you adapt to it, no? But in the beginning, it, it just, it's different than, than what you, what you uh, have back home because you've grown up a certain way, you've done it your whole life, and then you come here and, and everything changes, you know? Yeah, and I'm sure having to leave your family behind is just once must have been uh, had. Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, and and it made it difficult with with the pandemic for people to come to see, to come and visit. Um, but yeah, leaving your family back home is is obviously not easy to do. But at the same time, you take a risk and you see how far you can go in in uh, in football here. Yeah. So uh, now, from playing with Brooklyn Italians to reaching such a high level in Madonna. How does it feel making such a quick jump from uh, just you're 22 years old? How does that feel? No, I mean, it's definitely, it's, it definitely feels good. It's a good accomplishment, uh, something that I always remember. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you can't, can't get past that. It was many days of, of just, you know, grinding, uh, working hard, getting, getting to the field early, doing a lot of extra things. Maybe that some guys didn't do, you know. But, yeah, I mean, it's a, it, it's a great accomplishment and I'm something that – it's something that I'll always remember and always keep close to me. Yeah, totally. So now, when you played in New York for the Cosmos, um, what was that like representing representing that team? Yeah, I mean, obviously, many people know their history. Um, they have a great history, likes of LA, Beckham, Bauer, Kinaya, everybody, you know. So it has a great history. And I could say putting on that jersey every game was was something special. You know, you kind of feel that, Wow, I'm a part of something that was that's big, that was big, that yeah. still is big. You know, it has a big name, and uh, no, it's great. Even you could see sometimes uh, at the games, the fans were passionate. We got some decent crowds to the games, you know. So it was it was great. I mean, uh, a great organization, and I wish them nothing but the best. Of course, and yourself being a New York native, representing your own city, it's got to be huge. Yeah. Exactly. No, playing playing in New York, being from New York, born and raised in New York, was was something great. Able was able to get my friends out, my family, everybody. That's awesome. So now moving to Perugia, I know you mentioned you had your injuries. How how did you overcome it? So yeah, I mean, so first I signed. I signed that it was January twenty first when I signed there, um, and exactly one month later, I got I got uh, operated. So January twenty first I signed. February twenty first I was operated already. Wow. I tore my ACL and uh, my meniscus, my uh, inside and outside of my meniscus. Um, and uh, how did I overcome it? I mean, the thing was I got operated and then uh, COVID happened. So I kind of lost a little bit of time. Um, I was working at my house because things started shutting down here in Italy. I wasn't able to get my therapy that I needed. Um, I remember at home I was using, I was using two San Pellegrino bottles to hold my knee to push my knee down in a bag. Wow. Um, and no, listen, I was, I was doing stuff in the house while, while things were closed and, uh, and I just had to work every day. Uh, to overcome an injury like that, it's, it's hard work. It's staying focused. It's not losing your head. It's not losing the, the mentality that you had before the injury. Um, and I think that's, that's, that's important when, when players go through an injury or, or a rough time. Yeah, you, like you said, you got to keep focused. You got to stay on track. So, 100%. Now, Giuseppe, what would you say uh, so far has been your proudest uh, football moment? I think, I think uh, when I first signed with Perugia, you know, it was my first, first uh, contract here in Europe. And uh, it was something, like I always said, uh, I'll keep close to me. I'll remember it. Uh, I remember stepping into the office and, and, and there was the president and, and, and uh, the director. And it's just something that makes me that makes me feel happy that I'm proud of um, that I'll always take take with me. I'm sure. I'm if you're signing that first professional contract, that's got to be you. Yeah. So now, uh, can you tell us what what does a day in the life of a Salernitana player look like from morning till till night? Yeah. Um, so depending on what time we train, um, let's say um, for example, we'll we'll train in the afternoon. Let's say we train at two. We have to be there at the, at the facility at two, and we'll uh, training will kick off around three. So in the morning, I'll get up around eight o'clock, 
I'll have some breakfast, um, whether it's hard boiled eggs, some, some, uh, some cereal, yogurt, fruit. Um, after that, I usually like to go on a walk outside. It's a nice day. Go out for a walk, kill some time, come back, relax, probably play some PS5 a little bit. I uh, can't lie. Yeah, it helps. It helped me a lot. Yeah. Um, and then around 12, 12, 15, start making some lunch after lunch, um, get dressed, uh, head off to the training facility, get to the facility, obviously two, three o'clock training, three, we'll have training after training, stay, do some work in the gym. Um, try to stay as long as possible at the facility. Um, I'm obviously home for the, for the beginning part of the day, but then in the afternoon, I like to stay there for as long as I can come back, make some dinner, relax some more, watch some TV. Usually there's some games on, put some games on, and that's pretty much it. So do you stick to a strict diet, or is there stuff that you're always looking uh, to do? No, so, so basically uh, it's not really strict. I mean, I always look to eat healthy and clean. I don't eat any, whether it's, I don't eat any fried food, fast food, none of that while I'm playing. In the off season, occasionally, yes, it's good. It's good to have because we're all normal. No, we're normal people. But, yeah, I mean, I look to always have a, a good, healthy breakfast, uh, carb-based lunch for when I use all the carbs for, for training. And at night, usually stick with a protein, a fish, always vegetables, and a lot of greens, basically. I wouldn't say it's a strict diet, but, I mean, it's, it's definitely a clean one and not eating anything that, that will affect my performance. Or so now, uh, what is something special about the club that us football fans don't get to see from the outside that you can see from the inside? Uh, I would say how, how it's a, how it's a family. I mean, I'm, I'm here this year. Uh, I signed in, in, uh, in the summer. So, uh, I've been here for a couple of months and I could see how it's a family. When you walk through the doors to go to, to go to training, you see everyone's with a smile. Everyone's joking around. There's always, there's always a good environment that you're walking into. Um, and that's one thing that, that, that's good, and you want to be a part of, of course, and that everyone doesn't see from the outside. That team chemistry is, it's yeah, really very important. important. Yeah. So uh, now, how does it feel to be a part of a club that's that's in fourth place right now, fighting for uh, a promotion spot into the Serie A, and also looking to be uh, the first place team in Serie B? Yeah, I mean, it, it's great. The results we we we've gotten this this season have been have been very good. Um, we've stuck to what we what we do best, and uh, we battled every game. To be in fourth place, I mean, uh, some people may say they didn't expect it, but listen, we're there. Um, we're fighting every day. We're working hard every day. Um, uh, we pray that we can pull it off and we can we can head up. Uh, it would be a great great achievement for for the city, for the fans, uh, for us, the players, everybody. Um, so no, it's it's a great feeling, but at the same time, you know that. There's a lot of work still to be done, and, and we still have to, to grind out every day and, and uh, get after it. There's still plenty of games left in the season. We love to see yeah. the progression keep on going from there. Yeah. So now um, I, I see you're listed as American citizenship on uh, your player card. So if you were to get a call up from Italy and the United States, in your opinion, who would you choose and why? No, for me, it's a no-brainer. I would go with the United States. Uh, born and raised in New York. Uh, someone asked me, I I'm American. Um, and uh, I think if that, if that day were to come, I, I hope it would. Um, no, I would go with the U.S. I mean, uh, definitely has grown a lot, the sport in the U.S. And obviously you could see with all the players from Europe coming here to play and the, the names of McKenney and Gio Reyna, everyone, everyone knows them. The list goes on and on. Um, clearly, clearly something's going on and we're doing something right, you know? So uh, I'm definitely proud to be an American and to represent Americans back home here in Italy. And uh, yeah, if that day was come, I think I would, I would go to the U S hundred percent. Good pick. Good pick. So now uh, questions from the Instagrams, uh, the DMs, and just comments. We have Victor Bastos that is asking, what is the biggest challenge that you had to overcome to become a professional, to get to that next level? Yeah. Uh, I would say uh, injuries. 
uh, not injuries, but an injury that I, that I had particularly was uh, I tore my ACL. I, I did it twice. The first time I did it was uh, I was 16, and it was something where it was an important stage where I was on the verge of going to college. I was looking at schools, and back home, obviously, college is kind of the first step. If you don't get the contract right away, it's the first step of making it to the next level. And um, I tore my ACL, and it kind of affected where I was going to land in, in, uh, in college, where, what school I was going to go to. Um, but luckily, like I always say, hard work and, and staying focused on what you need to do. I was able to land a school that, that fit best for me. And um, nothing. I, uh, I spent three years there, and it helped me to get where I was at the New York Cosmos. New York Cosmos were able to see me in college. They liked, they obviously liked what they saw. And from there, things just worked. Yeah, that's awesome. So, uh, Gabriel Duarte also asked, what's some of your best advice for young players? Best advice I would say is to take care of your bodies, eat right, and uh, give it all every day. Um, those three things are three things that I live by. Because at the end of the day, if you can turn back and say, you know what, I gave it 100% every single day, then you know that you did what you had to do. Yeah. Leave everything aside, decision-making, uh, what people say, what people think about you. As long as you go out there, give it 100% every single day, take care of your body because your body is, is what you – that's your, your job, you know. You have to use your body to, to perform on the field. Um, and eat right. Eat right is because, because, like I said, your body is what – you go out there and perform, no? Um, those are three things that I would give to the, to the young players. Awesome. Also now, Salernitana News in English, in English says, what is your opinion about the team as a whole instead of the team as individual? Team as a whole, I would, like I said, it's, it's, it's like a family, you know? Uh, every time you walk into the facility, it's always, it's always great to see them, even though you might have saw them a couple hours earlier. Um, it's great to always see, to see the guys, you know, everyone's with a smile. Everyone's, everyone's pushing each other, which is very important. Um, and, uh, it's a serious environment, but at the same time, it's something that, 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 that's left, that you can laugh, that you can, that you can joke around and, and you can, and you can work at the same time, which is, which is great. Great. So this is how we usually end with this question. Um, I always ask, what is the best advice you can give? to non-league players and amateur players that are still looking for their dream to go pro, that still have that goal? Yeah, I mean, keep, keep doing what you're doing. Um, take everything in, learn from, from everything that you see. Um, don't stop, never change, change who you are, you know, because there's something in you that, that you do good. And when you do it at your best, it could be something special, you know? So I think being who you are, working hard every single day, um, not letting anyone get into your head is, is, is big, you know, because if you let, the moment you let somebody change you or get into your head is when, is when you can lose it. But uh, staying focused, uh, giving it all every single day is, is something that, that won't let the dream die, you know? Yeah, of course. Thank you again, Giuseppe, for taking the time. To no problem. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Later, bro.